What's going on guys? Andrew here with another episode of East Coast Tech. And today I'm going to talk to you about an uncomfortable topic. Deleting your CPU. Now, this is normally a very dangerous process and I do not recommend it if you are not up for it, especially if you don't feel very comfortable dealing with sensitive components like that. But I do have a nice and uh, streamlined and somewhat easy way of doing it. And I hope you like what you have to see. Deleting a CPU and replacing the stock TIM has been known to decrease load temperatures, allowing for more thermal headroom for overclocking and system uh, stability. Now, there are draconian methods for doing this, most of, which, uh, most of which involve a vice and a strong force of will, but luckily, a company named Rocket Cool has developed a tool for safely, mostly anyways, deleting a CPU. So here's the tool. Currently, it's only compatible with LGA 1155, 1150, and 1151 chips from Intel. Sorry AMD, no love for you. Moving on, I also purchased their, purchased their relitting tool, some super glue, and some new TIM to replace the stock stuff. I'll be replacing it with Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra. This is a liquid metal solution which has been raved to be amongst the best in thermal interface material. I also bought Cryonaut Thermal Paste from Thermal Grizzly. Heard some good things about this product and it seemed like a really good time to try it out. So we'll be testing my ITX system with a 4690K cooled by a Corsair H100 IV2. And um, we're just gonna get some baseline uh, temperatures before we do the deleting. So currently at 4.2 gigahertz, which is uh, the only current stable configuration for this rig at the moment, um, we still get a max temperature of like 94 degrees. Um, that's about as high as I would tolerate. Um, I'm going to bump the overclock up to like 4.5 just for kicks, and yeah, I mean, we hit like 100C almost immediately, so no. So let's begin the deleting process. To begin, clean your CPU with some rubbing alcohol. Then we're going to start with this side of the Rocket Cool tool, and place the CPU in the socket. Now just like on a motherboard, Rocket Cool has placed a triangle on the device so you know which way to line it up. You may need to apply a little pressure as it should be a snug fit. Next, we lay the top half on top of the bottom, making sure to push the splitter located on the underside as far back as you can. Next, align the holes and screw in the three included thumb screws. You don't need to screw them in super tight, but Comfortably snug would be appreciated. The next step is not for the faint of heart. With the included Allen wrench, start turning the large bolt on the side until it tightens up. At this point, the splitter is right up against the IHS. With a little added force, keep turning the bolt until you feel the IHS give out. Most people report hearing a popping sound, however, I did not. Luckily, I opened up the Rocket Kit tool and found that I was successful in deleting the CPU. All that's left is to clean off the black silicone gunk and wipe away the stock TIM from the CPU die, which is the large silvery square in the center. For the silicone, scraping it with a finger or the included wooden stick are your best bet for removal. Otherwise, lather up that isopropyl alcohol and go to town making sure to clean up the CPU die and PCB as best as you can. Now for the actual hard part, applying the Liquid Ultra. Fortunately, it comes with a brush for application and you will need it because you pretty much have to paint the stuff on and thin as layer as possible. It's not recommended to get this stuff on your other CPU components because it actually does conduct electricity so put a very small amount of the Liquid Ultra on your CPU die and get painted. You could tape off the rest of the CPU with electrical tape or scotch tape if you feel nervous here, but like a boss, I didn't. So with that out of the way, we can grab our relitting tool, 
place it on the rocket clip tool, and begin putting the CPU back together. Using the super glue, we'll, we'll apply a tiny bit to each corner of the IHS, line it up with our relitting tool, and gently place it back on the CPU. We'll line up the rest of the relitting tool, match up the holes, and you guessed it, screw in the thumb screws again. Lastly, we'll take the large black bolt and screw it into the center hole. We'll try to hand tighten this so that it's pretty tight up to the CPU, and then we can let it dry. I let mine dry for about two hours, and we're back! Now we can put the CPU back into the rig and fire it up. Woohoo! It boots! And it posts! Nice! Um, now we're gonna get some uh, after temps. Um, Alright, so we can already see that we're at a much cooler temperature than before. Um, after a little while under load here, we're maxing out at about 83 degrees C, which is <laughs> not bad for a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. Now let's ramp up the rig to 4.5 and see the results. Nice! Uh, we're getting as high as 89 degrees, which is absolutely fine. Um, so you, you've seen it here, folks. Real results and a major win for CPU enthusiasts and overclockers who want to push their hardware to the limit. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you hated it, dislike it, get subscribed. Again, this was Andrew with East Coast Tech. And I'll catch you in the next one.